How can we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus? Well, we're going to look at example 1a here. And notice that I have the derivative of the integral of sine of t dt. So what I can do is I can take the integral of this. So I'm just going to write my d over dx. And I'm going to integrate sine. So the integral of sine is going to be negative cosine of t, so cosine t, and my bounds are going to be from 0 to x. Okay, so that's why I have my t in there, because I don't want to mix up those variables x and t. So the t is my integral of my variable of integration, and x is what I'm going to substitute in. When I do this, I'm going to end up with d by dx, and in here, I'm going to plug in my x, so I get negative cosine of x minus negative, so plus cosine of 0. Okay, and that just happens to be 1. So I've done the integral part of that, and now I differentiate this. So when as I differentiate it, I'm just going to go up to here. As I differentiate this, the derivative of negative cos is going to be negative negative sine. So I'm going to end up with sine x. And the derivative of cosine of 0 is just 0. So I end up with sine x plus 0, or really just sine x. So this represents my integral and derivative. So I differentiate, I integrated this, I differentiated this. Again, notice that they seem to undo each other. I just end up where I started. Hmm. So the question really is, do I really need to do all these steps to get from that expression of derivative and integral to the final answer? Okay. So it seems like I can kind of predict what's going to happen here and just jump directly from here to here. Okay, well, let's try another one here. So we have the secant squared t. So I'm going to work out my derivative here. So my integral, so d over dx. The antiderivative function of secant is, secant squared is tan. So I have tan t, and I'm going to put my bounds in from pi over 4 to x. And so plugging those in, I'm going to end up, the, I'm looking for the derivative of that integral. Okay, plugging it in, I get tan of x minus tan of pi over 4. That happens to be 1, but really that's just all that is is a constant. So I'm going, when I differentiate this, so taking the derivative of this, I'm going to end up with the derivative of tan is going to give me my secant squared x minus 0, which really, because the derivative of tan of pi over 4 or derivative of 1 is just a constant, 0. So I end up again back where I started. Okay, so this seems very predictable. I should really be able to, when I integrate and differentiate, I should end up back where I started. That totally makes sense. So where would I use this? I can, when I end up with something like this, the g function is the integral of tan of t. Well, the problem with this is I cannot integrate and find g of x. It's not possible. I don't have the tools to integrate tan x right now. Okay, so this is a problem. Can I integrate to find g of x? And the answer to this is no, I can't. I don't know how to integrate tan x. 
But the question is asking, find g prime. Okay, now I don't really need to know the integral because I can say that, well, well, I can kind of do this long way around. I can say that my g of x, my g function is really just the same as the antiderivative function when I put my bounds in. So big F of t, when I put the bounds f and x, 0 and x in, and when I work this out, it's going to be fx minus f of 0, which is just some constant. Now again, I don't know what f is, but I do know that it exists. And if I were asked to find g prime, well, g prime really is the derivative of f, big F, which is my tan already. So if I want to find g prime, I can just jump directly to that. Well, g prime is the derivative of that integral. That really is just tan x. And since it's a derivative, please remember not to put a plus c in there. There's no plus c that's relevant here. And so same thing here. I have this function g defined by this integral. And I cannot find that g of x function. Okay? I cannot integrate and find g of x. But do we need it to find g prime of x? Well, the answer is no, because I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus in that the integral from 1 to x is undone by the derivative of g prime. So if I want to find the derivative g prime, well, g prime is just that same function when I plug in the x. Okay, so there is my function. Again, although it's an integral, I'm differentiating, so there should be no plus c in here. So how can I prove this? I'm just going to show a proof of this. So we can actually prove this and by showing it like this. So we have the derivative of our integral. When I integrate this, I'm going to get a f big f function. That is my antiderivative function. I'm going to put my bounds from 2a to x. When I do that, I end up with this area function that looks like this. Big F at A, sorry, big F at X, or the antiderivative at X minus the antiderivative at A. X is a general point that generates a function. A is just some specific point. It could be any point. It actually relates to the plus C in our antiderivative. But since we're differentiating this, we don't need to worry about the antiderivative because we know the derivative and antiderivative undo each other. So I end up with f of x minus the derivative of f of a, which is 0. And so that ends up being just f of x. So again, I've shown that my derivative and antiderivative will undo each other to give me f of x.